and an official welcome to Monday Live, Exploring Birth Psychology. Today is Monday, May 17th, 2021. I'm your host, Katherine Lightfoot, the Education Director for APA, the Association for Prenatal and Perinatal Psychology and Health. We love being able to offer Monday Live presentations free and open to anyone who wants to join us on live Zoom every Monday. If you'd like to have access to the recordings of our Monday Live also, please join us as an APA Premier member. Not only will you have access to our Monday Live library of recordings, you will also have access to our journal articles, APA Connect member networking calls, and special member discounts to our events like the Congress in November. Thank you to each and every one of our members for your support of APA. Your support makes all that we do possible. I want to remind you that next week we have a free fireside chat with William Emerson. If you haven't yet registered for that, please take a moment to do that today. Brianna can put the link for you to register in the chat, and you can also find it on our events page, birthpsychology.com slash events. This fireside chat is free and open to all. It's a Zoom call just like this one, but it's on Wednesday, May 26th at noon Eastern time. And it's a wonderful opportunity to join in this casual conversation between our president, Dr. Raylene Phillips, and PPN pioneer, Dr. William Emerson. And you too will have an opportunity to ask him anything you'd like to know about his work and his experiences in the field of birth psychology. Everyone who attends the Fireside Chat will receive a special discount for a brand new lecture series that was created by Dr. Emerson just for you, just for APA to share his revolutionary teachings. So once again, you will need to register on Zoom for this event and you can click the link in the chat or go to our events calendar in order to receive the link to join us on Wednesday, May 26th. As we begin today, let's take a moment and just check in with yourself where you are today. Whatever your favorite grounding practice is, this is a little moment that we take each Monday to do together. Last week, Judith Weaver encouraged us to find a touch point on our body as a grounding practice. And I found myself really liking that. If you like that too, feel free to use that when we gather here. It could be your heart or your shoulder, your hand, your head. The key would be to use that touch point consistently so that it's available to you anytime you need it. Today, we are being joined by Lisa Reagan. Lisa is an award-winning journalist, an activist, and a nonprofit visionary. She explores the space between our unsustainable industrial old story and the emerging new story of what is possible for cultural creative families who are listening to their children while envisioning and exploring the way forward. Lisa is co-founder of the nonprofit Kindred World and the executive editor of Kindred. She also has a long association with APA. She created Birth Psychology Month and the Conscious Baby Ezyme. Her unrelenting passion for our home planet Earth and her belief in the unfolding capacities for our human family drive her vision for Kindred. But it is her beloved community of friends, family, and fellow activists who have made her mother quest possible and joyful. Welcome, Lisa. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine, to have uh, be here. And thank you, APA, for having me here. This is just a old home week to see everybody uh, <laughs> the, uh, up there. Uh, it's great to see all the faces and all the people that I know. So um, you just let me know when you're ready uh, for me to switch over and get started. Would you like for me to ready? wait a few more minutes? People are still coming in. I think we're ready to go. So go ahead and share your screen if you'd like, and we'll just okay. jump right in. Okay. All right. We'll just dive right in here. 
Again, thank you so much, um, Catherine and Brianna, for helping me get set up today and for inviting me to talk. Um, I agreed to do this talk. I think it may have been last year. I'm not sure. And then uh, the talk came, um, and trying to get ready for it came, uh, you know, during the launch of the uh, breaking the cycle short film. So I have uh, quite a bit to share with you here. It's going to be a compression of 20 some years, quarter of a century into 45 minutes, but we can do this and I look forward to doing this. Uh, uh, what I would like to do first is we're going to start with looking at um, the history, uh, how did we get here? Uh, this is really important to understand as we go into watching the film together a little bit later, because Ken Kendred has a long history as APA does and working in what is sometimes acknowledged unacknowledged consciousness raising movement of conscious parenting in the United States. And so we are going to get to um, the, the Breaking the Cycle film, and we're going to talk about the amazing resources that are there for us. But first, I'm going to take you down a, a little trip down memory lane because it's important to understand, again, the approach that Kindred is taking. So what we will uh, see and this, and I just, um, I can't see the top of my screen here. But we're going to look at Kendred's grassroots origins in order to appreciate the unique, unique worldview um, that we have in our projects and initiatives. And we're going to learn today why is it important to recognize things like cried out baby syndrome and other debilitating neonatal childhood and trauma patterns in our work as trance breakers and new cycle makers. Um, uh, you're, you're the people. <laughs> for this job. And we're going to talk about that as well, how really needed for psychology education and practitioners are, especially right now, and especially for breaking and remaking uh, cycles. So, and then we're going to look at um, how does Darsha Narvaez's award-winning integrative research remove for parents, professionals, and policymakers many blocks towards cultural transformation. This is such a key piece here. And one of the reasons that we are so excited about the Evolved Nest. Um, and then we're going to look at the film together and we're going to see and talk about uh, how these insights are presented and breaking the cycle. And then we're going to see uh, what kind of resources we have for you, which uh, just about include the kitchen sink. Um, and there are more on the way and there's already another film in the works. So let's get started here just by recognizing where did Kendrick begin. Kendrick began a quarter century ago in Virginia as an underground home birthing community. I was not a part of that community in the beginning. Um, there were 700 families and it was a, a midwife that instructed the families that they had to get together, share what they know, um, that she could not be there for everyone and they had to share their knowledge of raising children, especially in what was largely an unacknowledged wellness model. Um, they just knew that they were alternative and considered you know, weirdos and hippies and crunchy mamas uh, when actually they were in the middle of uh, what we know now to be a 50 year decline of the United States to the bottom of all international indicators for family, maternal and child health in the United States. So this again, 25 years ago, this impulse uh, for families to get together and to try to um, make wellness choices that they did not have language for at the time. The closest we came at the time was Joseph Chilton Pierce's work who told us that we were, uh, when you became a parent, you were facing the biocultural conflict because you were expected to choose between uh, moral imperatives, uh, not moral imperatives, biological imperatives and cultural imperatives. And if you read the New York Times uh, story this year uh, that finally looked at what mothers are going through in this country, what they said is mothers in this country before the pandemic, they acknowledged, were experiencing something that, that had been seen and is acknowledged in the medical field, which is called moral injury. And that means it's a form of PTSD. Um, you can read on Kindred. Uh, Darsha has written about moral in injury recently um, and the witnesses to the George Floyd death. Uh, and this is when you are put in the position 
of having to choose between what you would like to do for your child's health and wellness. And uh, then of course, blending into the culture, having to get up and go to work 10 days and after giving birth, those kinds of things that are uh, uh, hallmarks of our country's um, lack of support for families. So uh, what have we been doing for 25 years? Uh, we have been looking at all of these wellness challenges from a perspective that we didn't realize we had because it was so very organic. It's, it's like you do the work and then you get down the road and you turn around and you look back and you go, what was that we were doing? Oh, we were doing this. So this is just a, a nice um, <laughs> a piece of ancient history here. I was telling uh, Brianna and Catherine whenever I do these talks and I haven't done very many recently. And I, and I say quarter of a century ago, I was doing this I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> this is okay. Yes, it's really been that long and how slow has change or non-existent. Um, again, in the middle of a 50 year acknowledged decline. This is a, a photo from our Women, Birth and Empowerment Conference at Old Dominion University. We had multiple um, uh, birth conferences back in the day. Uh, this is our Baltimore chapter uh, that's standing in front of the poster at ODU. And uh, we worked with women's studies departments because we were, were framing these as uh, women's rights issues with their support. It, it was actually a really nice series of conferences we had. At this one, Marston Wagner was the headline um, for this one. So since then, again, just context, you know, uh, 25 years ago, we really were thinking things would get better. There, there are people who have held the space like APA and worked very hard in this country to try to turn around what was already perceived as happening. And of course, now we have statistics that show uh, that things are much worse. Um, we have pregnancy related deaths uh, have more than doubled in the past 25 years. I will say the uh, PDF that I sent over earlier of this PowerPoint is fully hyperlinked. If you see anything in here, a photo, or again, the source, you can click on it and go right to um, the citation. So we have maternal care deserts. We have systemic racism in healthcare that is killing black mothers and babies. And we have pregnancy-related suicidality rates that are so lumped in with the 2020 CDC report on maternal health, it was hard to tease them out, but the source that you can follow here shows uh, state statistics and the states have been tracking this for a while. And, and for example, Louisiana knows that 20% of maternal deaths are attributable to suicide in their, in their state. So uh, this is where we started and this is where we are. Not a lot better. Um, why do we need birth psychology to help us break the cycle? This is, uh, and I have some cool quotes here to <laughs> kind of help us get ready for, for uh, what's coming next. You know, Thomas Verney, you can see him. Um, you can listen to him on Kindred. We did an interview with him a few years ago, and his, the title of the article is 34 Years of Ducking Pies. I just love that. That's what he said. He said, you know, I spent 34 years ducking pies, <laughs> and, I, my, and I commiserated with him. You know, oh, I spent many years being called a hippie, and I thought I was just trying to, I, I didn't feel radical. I, I thought we were trying to make some common sense choices happen here for parents. And uh, so uh, we have lots of, um, lot, lots of, uh, yeah, activism and experiences in common with APA, Kindred and APA do. So um, uh, you can also go to Rian, see on Kindred, my interview with Rian Eisler this year. Um, she acknowledges that our current dominator model is a trauma factory. This is our culture that we're living in now. Um, Darshan Narvaez is awesome work, work showing bullying begins with babies. Um, we'll get more into that in a moment. And then of course, this piece of the activist paradox that I just wanna mention here as we go forward because this film is a tool to be used for activism. Um, but we, we have to acknowledge a couple of things first about breaking this cycle. Uh, and one of them is embedded here in Robin Grill's quote, we create public policy based on our inner child's unmet needs. 
I know I'm speaking to the choir, you know that, you know about patterning, we know about early trauma. We know that, uh, well, as Robin has said in this interview, we need to be aware that when we're shaking our fist at corporations and whoever it is to come get us, are we adults in possession of our of our body, our being, and our mind, or are we playing out a pattern? For example, he says, of the, the cried out parenting um, norm in this country, which is you know, the, the state of helplessness that we exist in, and then screaming at our authority figure to come get us and save us. That's not what we need to bring right now to this situation. We do not need to bring that patterning forward, and we do need to be aware of it. And uh, on Kindred, and you can click on this link and go over, to this article is the activist paradox. And this um, young man from the University of Wisconsin at Madison, Dave Mettler, who's been with us for about 10 years, uh, is our social justice editor. And he just hit the nail on the head when he wrote about how hard it is to be an activist these days and to be aware of your own conditioning and patterns that you're bringing to what you're trying to achieve. Um, and it is a paradoxical situation. And I will also say I took a slide out that comes after this one. I put it at the end as a bonus slide. If you want to go look at this slide, we have started the Kindred Fellowship Program, which launches this summer with our inaugural cohort of college students. And this is our way of introducing them to activism that is a sustainable model and includes this piece of uh, self-awareness, grounding, and um, tools to help you do the marathon again. What did I just say? I've been here, I don't know how many years. It's hard to imagine. But <laughs> I do credit uh, stamina, and I know a lot of people who are still in there with me credit their stamina to these amazing tools that just came out in the last, really, I mean, maybe you knew about them, but I think activists are really becoming, you can hear the, the phrases out there now, embodied activism, especially when now we're gonna take on social justice issues and we're talking about facing down transgenerational trauma. So this is very adult stuff um, that we are taking on. Okay, let me take a breath. <laughs> that was a lot. Why do we love Darshan Narvaez? And did, did I hear you welcome Darsha Catherine? Is she here? So she gets to hear how much we love her. It is, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm going to be a shameless fan. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, we do love her. And here's why. Remember that slide I showed you when we're at ODU and we're doing these women's uh, birth conferences. And from the parent perspective, this is what it was like back then. We would have to go find our practitioners in their silos, find the science supporting these practitioners in their silos, get a collection of the library books together, read them all, try to integrate this. And from our perspective, what we already know as parents is we want a whole child wellness model, even if we don't have the language for what that is yet. Even if we're in a state of confusion like many of us were in the beginning of forming Kindred World, what are we doing? Couldn't quite get a handle on it. We just knew that we were you know, like homing pigeons trying to get home. Salmon going up the stream. Where is it? Where's this model we're trying to get to? So language for what we're doing is really important. And at Kendred, we do have a new story glossary. Um, I just throw that out there because if we're going to tell a new story, we need new language. And uh, what, what uh, Darsha has done, um, it is remarkable. And I can't say this enough because uh, she integrated these fields of science, went around to multiple, um, uh, anthropolo she looked at the anthropology piece, she looked at the breastfeeding piece, she looked at the birth piece, and she integrated it into this book, The Neuro uh, Neurobiology and the Development of Human Morality. This book is an award-winning book. Uh, it was recognized by the American Psychological Association with the William James Award. That means it passed the science test 
just in case you're wondering. And, and it was also recognized by the Vatican with the Expanded Reason Award. And that's important to understand what that award is about. And if you go to Darsha's bio, there, the video of her accepting the award in Rome is there. And it's very interesting to hear the Roman, um, the Italian reporter saying, why is this award important? Because the Vatican has recognized the silo effect of the science and the, the cultural bias and limitations that's put on what we call science now is not helping us right now. And we need a holistic integrated view of these fields that can throw off cultural bias and help us get where we need to go as a species. It's very serious now, uh, as we saw just in a couple of statistics. And again, I don't need to spell that out um, to the choir, you know that. But if you would like to get to know Darsha a little better, um, you can hear our new interview with her. She is the new president of Kindred World. And uh, you can click on these links uh, on this page in the PDF. You can go to the book and read the introduction and the first chapter, and you can click on this uh, graphic and go uh, right to the interview with her. So uh, let me check my time here. Okay, perfect. Um, so I think we're almost ready to watch this Breaking the Cycle film. What I wanted again for you to, to be able to understand why, why is this film so important? Why is the Evolved Nest so important? Why is the backstory of Kindred so important? Because we have been trying for a long time to work our way upstream towards this wellness model that was integrated for us because it's too much work to ask a parent and practitioners and, and anyone to move into this space, uh, think that way for themselves, figure it out for themselves and then defend it. Uh, Darsha's done that for us. Uh, that is why we love you, Darsha. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> so now let's watch the film. If uh, Brianna has that, I will say I listened to it a little bit ago. The quality is it's not that great on Zoom. It's Zoom quality, however, this is a professionally uh, created film, and if you do get to listen to it online, I highly recommend it because even when that caveman guy turns around with his torch, yeah, hear the fiery torch going. <laughs> that was pretty cool when they did that. Just little subtle pieces. So okay. You can go. We've been told a story that we are selfish, aggressive, rugged individuals. But if that were true, we should have no problem with physical distancing and self-isolation. The pandemic showed us that this story is not who we are. That's because we evolved in cooperative bands of kin and non-kin, where we were nurtured and welcomed by all members of the community. We lived together, we gathered food together, we sang together, and we danced together. We knew it would have been impossible to survive on our own, but together we thrived. Today, we are living in a culture that goes against everything it means to be human. Our culture emphasizes toughness over tenderness, isolation instead of togetherness, even for babies. As a result, we are depressed, anxious, chronically ill, and at the bottom of every international indicator for health. We are stuck in a cycle of competitive detachment where we feel disconnected from others and even ourselves, while at the same time feeling we have to compete for anything worthwhile. There's a way not only to break this cycle, but to create a new one, one that reclaims our humanity and helps us heal ourselves and our culture. We can create a cycle of connected, cooperative companionship. For most of our existence, we have created culture from the bottom up, from the way we raise children, and from the top down. 
from the stories we told one another. Children were nested in loving, supportive village care, growing deep connections to and respect for the natural world. In modern culture, children are raised with disconnection, with little concern for their basic needs, and with an almost random set of relational experiences. They still hear stories conveyed by various media, but they are full of put-downs, egoism, and violence. Babies require an external womb experience to grow and connect with others. They need calming, affectionate care, immediate responses to keep them optimally aroused while rapidly growing brain connections. Without this early care, without meeting our millions year old biological needs for our evolved nest, babies learn a pattern of disconnection from the self, from others and from the world, manifesting in self-protective mindsets and irritation with people from different backgrounds or with different ideas. We withdraw from social life because it's just too painful, triggering the traumas we experienced early on in life. We constantly seek to fill a void we were never biologically intended to experience. The good news is that it's possible to break this cycle of competitive detachment and restore the cycles of connected, cooperative companionship. We can learn what our basic needs are and find ways to help everyone get them met. We can take steps that open our minds and hearts and build empathy towards others who are different from us. We can become aware and careful about where we put our greatest asset, our attention. We can build attachment to the natural world by immersing ourselves in its beauty and developing our connection with its aliveness. Cultures can and do change. It begins with each one of us realizing our inherent nature to be empathic, flexible, and sovereign beings, followed by taking steps to heal and restore our core nature. Many of us assume that the culture we live in mirrors innate human nature, but today's dominant cultures of competitive, destructive detachment are rare and recent. Nearly every other culture that has ever existed during our species history over millions of years has been one of connected, cooperative companionship. To heal ourselves and our world, we simply must return to this way of nurturing children and communities. For more information, go to breakingthecyclefilm.org. That was so beautiful, Lisa. Oh, well, you know, uh... The, the opening says, um, and that's why I have this graphic here, right, and, and this this um, this piece straight from the script says, you know, we were told a story. We were told a story that we're selfish, aggressive, rugged individuals. But if that were true, we should have no problem with physical distancing and self-isolation. And boy, did this pandemic show us that this story is not who we are. But having language to describe what we just went through, remember again, we're going salmon upstream where parents uh, uh, two decades ago trying to figure out why is this so difficult to make these wellness choices. I'm driven by the desire and love to create a whole wellness model for my child, even if I don't know what that is. I can't quite figure out why is it so difficult. Um, but I'm being told a story about how I have to compete and raise my child to compete in order to survive. 
And that turns out to be, that's not who we are and that's not who we've been for 95% of our human history. So this is the intersection between the evolved nest, this movie and Kindred, Kindred's um, slogan up there on the, on the front page is, you know, we're, we're here to tell the new story of the human family. And we do that by going around and we have for the last two decades and finding people who are thought leaders like APA leaders and interviewing them and trying to help whoever is receptive enough to hear this new story saying, you know, you're, you're going upstream and, but you're headed, you're going in the right direction. It's you're headed home and here's some backup <laughs> for that journey. So, so I would love to hear your questions. Um, there are tons of uh, materials on the site. There's a film discussion guide. There is a Spanish version of the film that is up. There is a page uh, on the on the Breaking the Cycle film.org site of discussion questions and the press release in Spanish. There are more materials in Spanish coming. And there is a huge um, international interest in the film. We've already had requests for translating it into a couple of other languages. Um, and uh, uh, right now I think it's about up to 7,500 views on the, on the Evolve Nest YouTube uh, page in the last, for the last two weeks it's been out. Um, so we're trying to keep up with demand and I'm, I'm really interested to hear, especially as people who are so crucial to breaking the cycle and helping us to remake uh, and heal people so that they, we have the people who have the capacity to make the new cycle. Because as we showed in the, uh, briefly in the activist paradox, we cannot really step into this new cycle making process until we've tended our own wounds, our own neurobiology and developed awareness skills around uh, how our culture is uh, hijacking our neurobiology. Um, so there's lots of grown up work to be done here and you are needed. Um, so does anyone have questions? Sure, yes. If you have questions, please feel free to type them up in the chat and we'll share them with Lisa. Um, I would like to know, Lisa, what, what's your main, what's the main takeaway or, or action point that you would like for people who see this film to do? What would you like for them to do next? Um, well, we have, uh, uh, these are, um, so what's next? What's next? We want to, people to be able to use, this is the film guide um, here. And again, a Spanish one is coming. Uh, we want people to, be, to see what we have for them to work with, to take time. If you need time to immerse yourself in, um, the Evolved Nest has a self-directed learning center. There are nine components of the Evolved Nest. You saw the little flower that went around. So there are nine components. The first one, of course, uh, perinatal experiences, right? Ground floor. Um, so these, uh, when you go to the uh, self-directed learning center, you can, pick which component you want to look at, and it'll have its own dedicated page with uh, videos that Darsha has recorded, podcast series. I mean, there is so much material there. You could spend quite a, uh, quite a bit of time just being immersed in what is the Evolved Nest and how does uh, having this whole child wellness model uh, help us to move our neurobiology into a more integrated place, you know, integrate our uh, thinking, integrate our neurobiology. Um, so you can join us on Mighty Network Group. I, <laughs> speaking of hijacking our neural nets, uh, we're really done with social media like everybody else is. Um, it was a great thing when it came out nine years, nine or 10 years ago, when we, I first saw Facebook, I thought, well, that's it. We're, we're going to win because we got this great tool and we can do all these great things. And then we watched what's called the organic reach go down, 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 down. It was harder and harder to get to people who are actually following us. We have 26,000 followers on the Facebook page, uh, just one of the kindred pages, and I'll go look and it'll say, you know, 19 people are actually shown whatever I post now. So um, 
we have our own network. We, we just uh, put this up in the spring uh, through Muddy Network. Uh, Muddy Networks, I have to tell you, it's a great tool. It is a platform you can go to online. You can uh, do it on your little, uh, you have your app. You can check in and see who's talking about what in the different groups. We have discussion groups online, courses coming up um, with Darsha Monthly. So there are a number of ways that you can interact with Darsha, with the film. And, and as I said before, there's already another one in the works. Um, so we're, um, we're listening and we're trying to identify and meet needs. And this piece, again, of the Evolved Nest, allowing us to have this lens uh, to see how everything is connected especially from the, the, well, you know, also it would be great if policymakers would listen um, and be able to um, absorb this uh, integrated view of you know, how we really are as humans. Um, that would be great. Um, so let's see, what else do we have? We have uh, the Evolved Nest has its own newsletter. That's very science focused. If you want to sign up, you can click that hyperlink there. Uh, the Kedred newsletter is a uh, number of thought leaders uh, from around the world contributing to the new story of our human family. And then there are take action parts in the Evolved Nest components where you can find the organizations and institutions who are working for systemic change in the United States, like working on paid leave and um, uh, Black mothers and birthing in the United States. Uh, tremendous tremendous work is being done out there. Um, it's really, really wonderful to see actually. So that's our what next page. And if you want me to keep going, I have bonus slides here as well. We only have a few minutes left, but, so I don't want to miss um, questions if people have questions. Wonderful. People are saying, so Marcia says that she shared the video already with her students as their end of semester gift and they loved it. She says it puts together everything we've talked about all semester. Oh, that's fantastic. Really yes. great. Yes. Sandra's going to share it with her doulas Latinas group. Excellent. And Sandra also asks, I will look at the website for resources for sure. As a psychologist from Brazil, I've been investigating for over 25 years humans personality. I guess it's not really a question, a comment. So. Uh, if you've got bonus slides, we'd love to see them. Okay, great. All right, let me go back then. Um, I wasn't sure I would have time to show you this, uh, but one of the, the, the really amazing pieces of the Evolved Nest, and once you're sinking into it, is it helps us to get oriented towards uh, what the United Nations has said is our, uh, again, I'm talking to the choir here, but our only hope as a species is that we shift our awareness into a more indigenous worldview. So I worked with uh, Four Arrows, who is one of our contributing editors and a professor. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the name of his university escapes me right now, but he is on Kindred. You can follow his work there. And he came up with this uh, chart for his university class. And it has traits on one side of the indigenous worldview. What does that look like? So when we're talking about breaking the cycle, the cycle, the characteristics of the cycle on the right, this dominator worldview, the competitive detachment, um, uh, that's there. And then we have the indigenous worldview. What does it look like to create a cycle of, of cooperative companionship? What are the characteristics? So we have tools like this on Kindred for you. I know for visual learners like myself, I'm going to skip back over to this Brenner little uh, series of nested circles here. This one is uh, created specifically to show the layers of support that are needed by parents, children, and everyone for wellness. Um, this is, uh, again, anytime we can find something that helps other ways of learning, and I'm certainly a visual learner, I saw this uh, Broth and Brenner uh, uh, model used for something else and, and thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I, I can see it now. See, you can see, you can hand this. I feel like we can hand this to parents and, and say, see, you're not crazy. You really need these other layers of support that are you know, structurally missing um, or, or de just uh, not developed well in our country. And then we have uh, fun things uh, 
uh, uh, we have all kinds of fun things, but one of my favorites is the child care, and this is very popular, child care checklist. What are we going to do now in this post-pandemic era? Uh, what a great opportunity we have to reinvent, question everything, uh, and, and have tools ready to go for that purpose. So what does it look like if you were to walk into a child care uh, center and it was nested and ready to carry out uh, nesting for children? So all of these are again are hyperlinked in your PDF and you can click right on and the uh, worldview chart is a, uh, also can also be printed out as a poster. Uh, the child care checklist uh, is coming out in Spanish. Um, and this uh, Rothenbrenner graphic goes uh, straight to Darsha's article on the layers of support needed. Uh, let me see what else I've got in here. We have, uh, we're almost done, we're almost done. So, oh, we have our 28 day baby campaign. See, even I forget what kinds of fun things we've got. Here's the kitchen sink <laughs> coming at you. So we have our 28 day baby care um, campaign and we've run this a uh, couple of times. It, last year we started running it in the honor of Attachment Parenting Month. They're also one of our partners, uh, Attachment Parenting International. Um, this is not a piece to be skipped. How, how do people, how, how are we going to learn how to interact with babies? Uh, most parents by the time you know they have a child may or may not have had enough interaction with children and babies to know what to look for in cues and, and the expectations of, from babies need to be managed, as Darsha says, uh, in this program, in this campaign, and in many articles she has written on baby wellness. Uh, babies are not children, and baselines for babies need to be acknowledged as something completely different. Um, uh, all right, and one more minute, I'm going to just, uh, crow a little bit about this slide that I took out because I didn't want to derail us, but I did want you to know that we are working with young people who are so excited about, and I think they actually get this. I think about when I was their age and how hard it was to understand wholeness and wellness and shifting, and they're already there. A lot of them really are. It's just extraordinary and so uh, inspirational. And so we have started our Kindred Fellowship Program that um, Darsha is one of the instructors for. Um, we have a number of instructors, including Robin Grill, uh, who's helping us uh, to orient students who are very passionate about making cultural change to be inside of this wellness model first so that they don't get caught up and trapped in the activist paradox that we looked at earlier. Um, and uh, again, that, these are all hyperlinked so you can go read more about this program that's coming out this summer. So those are my bonuses and um, I hope we don't feel too overwhelmed, but we, we are doing our best to provide uh, materials for cultural change artists and trance breakers, as we call you, and new cycle makers. And anything you can think of that we're missing, you'd like to see there, uh, you can always uh, shoot us an email and let us know. Wonderful, thank you so much, Lisa. We feel, here at APA, we feel so blessed to be um, partnered with you in some small way and that we know that you're big supporters of APA and as are we of Evolve Nest and Kindred. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, thank you for having me. So we have a couple of other comments I'd love to read to you. Sandra okay. says- Okay, I finally can open up <laughs> chat over here now that uh, yeah. <laughs> my screen is off. Okay, great. Yeah. Sandra says, your movie made me think, how many countries can benefit and at this moment we really need that in Brazil and in India. Maybe translate it into the Hindi language. I know in India, there's actually so many different languages, but. Yes, that would be great. Susan says, Lisa and Darsha, you're my heroes, my sheroes. Aww. Thank you for your service and creativity. We are blessed. Oh, that's very sweet. Lots of wonderful things that are being written and I'll share the chat with you as well. By okay. <laughs> We do have another question. Um, yeah, are you all a nonprofit organization or someone's yes. wanting to know how, how you get your support? Yes, yes, we are a nonprofit organization. We have dedicated donors. We do have people who contribute. Uh, we have had grants in the past. 
Um, so well, we're certainly open to more. I, I was just telling Catherine and Brianna, I was like, staff, that would be lovely. And I don't mean Gandalf staff, although I'd probably take that too. I'd like to have, <laughs> we talk about that all the time. We'd love to have a full staff uh, working for us. We're very lucky. We do have lots of volunteers. Uh, we racked up um, 2,270 hours in volunteer work last year alone. Uh, that translates into between fifty and sixty thousand dollars in donated time. It's it's really significant. So um, we're very lucky as well there. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that everyone can um, jump on and check out some of those wonderful resources that are available. And don't forget at APA we also have wonderful courses that are right uh, in line with this work as well. Yes. So Thank jump you. on to our <laughs> education, our learning center, and we have a Nurturing Connections Parenting Program, as well as, of course, our large PPE &E program. Raylene's asking, does Kindred have anything specific for hospital administrators to help change hospital practices and staffing issues? Wow, that would be fantastic. And I know that that was something APA had been working on um, a few years ago. I would like to see what is happening there. Uh, if that if there is anything that has been created um, by by you know in that we do see uh, interest in our work coming from um, an educated population of professionals who are ready to pick it up and take it out in that way. So I'm not sure how we could modify something, but I would love to be open. You know, I'm open to a discussion about that. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, we still have some projects in the works on that as well ourselves. So always, always. Okay, well, thank you so much, Lisa. We've enjoyed having you here so much. Yeah, and thank you. We just really hope that we give you all of our blessings and, and um, big success for your short film and all the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you all. And we hope that all right. you all bye -bye, everyone. <laughs> come back next Monday where we'll hear from Ellie Taylor, all the way from Australia. Ellie joins us to speak about becoming us, whole family bonding. Until then, much love to you all. And please feel free to unmute yourselves as you say goodbye today. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Hello, Hello. Lisa Hi. and Dr. Narvaez and Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. everybody. Wonderful. Good night. Warm hugs to everyone. <laughs> Bye.